Wednesday, September 7, 1921. A 16-year-old George Nepier had been given the afternoon off school to attend the big game. The mighty Springboks were touring New Zealand for the first time, and with the series in the balance at one test all, the Springboks were taking on the New Zealand Maoris in Napier in preparation for the deciding test. The atmosphere was electric. The people of New Zealand had quickly come to realise that this rugby rivalry with the Springboks was different. And George Napier remembered spontaneous huckers emanating from the stands. It was a brutal physical encounter, although played in chivalrous spirit as is rugby's curious convention. Napier was inspired. However, outside the chalk lines, trouble was brewing. George Napier could not then have known it, but he had just witnessed the moment this rivalry lost its innocence. For a South African reporter dispatched his match report following the game, complete with a disgraceful racist slant. That telegram was leaked into the New Zealand press, sparking national outrage, complete with calls from Maori communities to block this rivalry until such time that South Africa had halted their colour bar in sport. That was not to be. Seven years later, when the All Blacks were invited on a return tour to South Africa in 1928, the invitation was not extended to Maori players. By then, George Nepier was perhaps the finest rugby player on the planet, a fullback who had rewritten the rules of that position, so emerging as the face of an all-black generation remembered as the Invincibles. However, his Maori roots saw him excluded from Morris Brownlee's 1928 tour party, a slight with which he would never fully come to terms. September 2nd, 1928. A 17-year-old schoolboy in the Free State snatches at the morning paper, eager to read about the final test in Cape Town. His name was Donnie Craven. And the news wasn't good. The All Blacks had won, so squaring the series, as had been the case in 1921, an ongoing deadlock. But Craven found himself mesmerized, not by the match report, but rather by a back-page image of Morris Brownlee walking his team out onto the pitch at Newlands. For such was the intensity on his face that a curious fascination had been awoken in Craven, one which eventually grips every Springbok fan, a recognition that the all-black rivalry is different. Nine years later, Donnie Craven was a stalwart in the Springbok team, which finally broke the deadlock, beating the All Blacks at Eden Park to win the series in 1937, a famous team which captured the hearts of New Zealand while doing much to restore relations with Maori communities. It was the tour which opened Craven's eyes to rugby's almost magical tendency to forge connections, a powerful antidote to the human divisions being created by our South African politicians. And so while George Nepier emerged at the center of protests against all black tours to white South Africa, Danny Craven, by contrast, believed that rugby was our best means of preserving what he believed to be a special national connection. Two men whose intricate dance over the next half century was symbolic of a national relationship drawn together by a shared passion for rugby and yet torn apart by our politics. Far From a Dance tells the story of the Springbok all-black rivalry. 100 years, 100 test matches. The characters, the titanic contest, the politics, the unrest, the reconciliation. George Nepier, Donny Craven, Kevin Skinner, Don Clark, Brian Williams, Errol Tobias, the Haka, the Ntlamu, Flower Bombs, Fitzpatrick and Khaleesi. This is the backstory to one of the most emotive rivalries in all of sport.